Now we're going to put the purlins on. The purlins are these pipes, they're about 10 foot lengths, and they run lengthwise the entire distance of your building, stringing from hoop to hoop. In this way that all the hoops will act as one, then in the wind it won't just, if one gets hit by something, it reinforces it against the rest. So we're gonna get started on those. There's three rows of purlins. The first one is right at the top of the peak. They go on the underside of the hoop. And then the next two rows go on each side, halfway down the hoop on either side. All right, this goes together, very similar to how the braces do across the hoops. So first you take one of your brackets, the same as before, you slip that on there. I bend that shut a little. And then these are your ends that, that slip into the purling poles. So you're going to take one of these then and mount that in here. All right, just snug that, don't tighten it. You want to be able to still move this. So that way we can go ahead and rotate this up a little. Then you're going to take one of your poles and slide that in. Just like that. And then you're going to take one of your self-drilling screws and screw through the bottom. Just like on the hoops, you want to make sure you don't have any bolts or screws or anything poking up to the top because that'll get your film later on. like that and then go ahead and leave this loose for right now because you're going to want to go ahead and push your purling up into place and make sure that you've got it all fastened in several spots before you tighten this and then once you tighten this go ahead and just put a tech screw through the bottom then too all right we're on to the next tube now where this is the first one where you use the bracket to put it on pretty straightforward and self-explanatory you just hold this up here Now that that one's on, you can go back to the first at the end hoop there and go ahead and tighten down that bolt there and then put a tech screw through the bottom of that bracket and make sure it doesn't rotate later on in time. You just continue the same bracketing the rest of the way and just keep connecting pipes together. Put a screw through at every joint and that's it. On the ends of these purlings, they're a little bit long by about two or three feet and so you have to cut them off the size. That's not a big deal. What you're going to want to do is first go ahead and take the bracket that goes over your end hoop and put it on. Now once that's on, I'm going to put this in and then go ahead and just put on this entire end piece. And don't tighten it down, just kind of lightly snug it enough so that way your bracket doesn't slide clear to the bottom of your hoop. Now, once that's on there, that gives you a good, accurate distance to where this purling's gonna be and where you need to cut it. So go ahead and just mark that where it needs to be cut. Just kind of hold it up and compare it. It doesn't have to be completely dead on, on your measurement because you've got about three inches here that slides in. So, go ahead and just hang that there. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and just lightly snug this just enough so the vibration of cutting the purling doesn't cause your bracket to slide all the way down. That happens and you gotta slide, get down off of your loader or scaffolding and you bring it all the way back up. It'll just save a little bit of time if you just tighten it up just enough it's not gonna wanna move around on it. Just like that. Once again, I'm going to use a reciprocating saw. Um, a pipe cutter works, and so do the tools I mentioned before. If you use a pipe cutter, you're going to need a reamer, because since this goes inside, any burrs or anything that's on the inside of the pipe from cutting it, you're going to need to clean out with either a reamer or a file or something along that line. All right, there we go. 
Now, uh, the advantage of using something like a pipe cutter is it's going to leave you not only a straighter cut, but it's going to leave you a cleaner cut on top without these burrs. You're going to want to make sure that you get these cleaned off. You can do it after you go ahead and put this on, but you do want that cleaned off and smooth before you put on your film or otherwise anything that's sharp at all will cut right through your plastic once the wind starts moving everything around. So let's go on ahead and loosen this back up. Now we're going to go ahead and slip that in there. See that just slips right in when you use a saw like that. If you use the pipe cutter, you won't be able to do that. It will have to be cleaned out. All right, now we got that slipped in there. Let's go on ahead. And, uh, before actually you put in your screws into here to hold it, you're going to want to go on ahead. I almost lost it there. You're going to want to go on ahead and put your end bracket on. So that way, if this needs to slide out a little, then you can. If you put your screw in here, you might find that if your cut was a little off, it won't reach. See, now I did have to slide that out about an eighth inch, maybe a quarter. And if I would have put a screw in there, then this bolt hole wouldn't have reached. So that's why you want to save that and then put your screw in right now. Same thing, make sure your screw's toward the bottom so it doesn't get your film. All right, now that's how you finish off the end on the purlins and just repeat the process for the last two purlins you have. The purlins are in place, so now we're gonna put the cross bracing on. And um, this goes from the peak down to the next hoop in line. And there's just two rows of this. You'll go from the peak on the end wall down to the next hoop. And then there'll be another brace that goes from the second hoop down to the third hoop. And so um, what you're going to want to do is measuring down from the peak here down to where your bracket will go. We're going to use the same type of brackets we've been using. We're going to want to kind of hold this in place because you're not going to want to, you got to be careful. You'll get this in in place just to realize you're coming out right on that purling and that's no good. So you're going to want to kind of just hold this, figure out where you're going to be able to get your bracket onto the second hoop where it's not going to interfere with the purling. So everything holds out where it should be. You don't have to bend anything around. So just kind of hold it to where you have it and it'll work. Get a measurement. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put this bracket on the same way we've been doing. My measurement ended up being one foot eight inches down. Yours will be different. It depends on the size of your high tunnel or greenhouse, uh, where your purlins are set, and just kind of a case by case basis. But mine was one foot eight inches down from the peak. And so you're just going to want to check yours the same way I showed you and figure out where your measurement should be. Now this measurement should then go ahead and work out for the other side here and then on the other end too. But you'll want to check it, but it should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and put our bracket on here the same way we did for all the other bracing and then the purling ends. Set the other end of your pipe up on top of your purling if you want, kind of helps hold it up while you get your bolts and stuff in place. You should be able to go ahead and tighten this while you have it here. It's um, just going to be in this same horizontal position here. Kind of want to make sure it's not too far up. You don't want it to poke your film when it's all done. Go ahead and tighten that down. Just like the rest of these brackets, after it's on, put one screw in. This one, the second brace that goes on, that goes from the second hoop down to the third one, you don't have to measure. You just butt the bracket right up against the bracket for the bracing that goes across the hoop. So you just put that right there. Go ahead and hold up to about the correct angle. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. Alright, 
another self-drilling screw. When you're putting them in above you, make sure you have safety glasses on. I haven't always been having mine on lately. It makes it easier if you go ahead and just twist this a little. That's all it takes. It doesn't take much. You can kind of just hold it up there and get lined up with, you can see now that it sets sort of the same orientation and so it's not twisted in comparison. If you have trouble getting those squeezed together tight enough to get your bolt and your nut started, they can be kind of a hassle. You can also go ahead and take a clamp or something or another set of locking pliers and squeeze that together. If, so that way if you have trouble getting that on, that might be a little bit of an easier way for some of you. All right, there we go. That's how you do the bracing that goes from the peak down to the sides. And you're just going to repeat that same process for the other side here. And then after you're done with that, then you go to the other end of the high tail and do the same thing. Mm -hmm.